You found me in the womb. You work so wonderful. You know me, Lord. You know me, Lord. A song for me you wrote. Life's journey to explore. You know it all. You know it all. If I rise on wings of dawn, on the depths of seas I fall. By your gracious love I'm found. You're my ever-present God. How precious are your thoughts, oh God. I could never comprehend. You who know me inside out. You're my ever-present God. You know. Discern my every thought. You search me, Lord. You search me, Lord. You know all of my ways and everything I say. You see it all. You see it all. If I rise in winds of dawn. Seas I fall by your gracious love I'm found. You're my ever present God. How precious are your thoughts, oh God? I could never comprehend. You know me inside out. You're my ever present. How precious are your thoughts, oh God? I could never comprehend. You who know me inside out, you're my ever-present God. We'd like to invite you to our YouTube channel, All People's Church Bangalore. We are pleased to make a lot of resources available on this channel. There are numerous playlists uh, that include our Sunday sermons, our TV programs, our daily devotional called Living Supernaturally, and also our Foundations course and several other playlists, uh, resources that you could use. Make sure you subscribe to this channel so that you can stay updated with all the new resources that are being released every week. And all of this is given freely to you to equip you live powerfully and victoriously for Jesus Christ. Enjoy these resources. Hey, I'm Rohan. I'm an architect, a freelance filmmaker, and I do theater. Hi, I'm Pooja. I'm a graphic designer, and I love art and music and fashion. Hi, I'm Joshua. I'm the growth lead at a medtech startup. I love playing the guitar, making music, and watching movies. 
I'm here today to try and understand what's okay and not with digital dependence. And I'm here to um, know about the freedom of expressing one's sexuality and preferences. With societal pressure, depression and suicide cases doing the news, I'd like to know if Christianity has something more authentic to offer. Thank you for tuning in to Living Strong and I have with me three fine young people. Over the last couple of weeks we have been talking about some interesting topics with our young people here and um, some of the things that we've already discussed has been sexual purity, uh, anxiety and depression and uh, digital dependence. Today we're going to be looking at conforming to the world standards. So as young people, um, I'm sure that there is a lot of pressure to conform to the world standards of today. Unlike generations past, that it wasn't as much as a pressure as what, what you all go through. So I'm sure there are certain challenges and, and questions that come as a result of how much do I conform to, how much do I agree to certain standards of the world. So we will discuss this topic today and I open it out to you all to ask any kind of questions. So the Christian youth today um, are under the influence of the world, mm -hmm. right? Uh, what are some of the common challenges you see the, the youth in the body of Christ face? Mm -hmm. So that's, um, that's a great question, Joshua. And the fact is that the Christian youth face similar issues to those uh, outside of the church as well. They go through similar challenges. So maybe what I'd like to do is probably enumerate a few and uh, um, uh, in, in order to see what, what kind of issues that they come with. So I'll, I'll start with, as, as young believers, what are some of the challenges they f that they face? I think the first one is just living out their faith, just um, taking what they learn from the word into the world, that often becomes a challenge. And so some of the examples that I can probably think of is, is even the language that we use. You know, we're taught in the Bible to keep uh, our tongues pure, to keep our mouths pure. But the kind of language that you hear on the outside or what is demanded of you sometimes is very is, is definitely opposite. And that sometimes is a challenge. How do I conform? Do I, do I take care of what I say? So that's just living your day-to-day -day faith. Another spiritual area would be just how you personalize your faith. So faith is understood in different ways in the world outside, what people believe in, where they put their hope in. And when we go out to um, express that we believe in a God who came down, who lived a life just like we did, who died for us and now sits on, uh, you know, on, on the throne and, who, and the Holy Spirit who is living with us. That in itself sometimes becomes a challenge to even express to somebody else. So that often again becomes um, a challenge of how do I uh, personalize my faith and how do I express that to others. There are the personal challenges that, that come about. I think the biggest one is sexual purity, right? Sexual freedom is, um, is what is taught right now in the world. But you, in, in the scripture, you, you learn about keeping yourself pure. So just living a life of sexual purity outside the world becomes a struggle. Then issues to do with yourself, self-image, self-esteem, self-confidence. Often we see in the world around, everyone's chasing after something to feel good, you know, to feel better about themselves. Either it's money, it's work, it's uh, a job, it's a career, it's looks, it's appearance, it's the things that you have, you know, kind of tells you how good you, good you are as a person. So, so often young believers find that as a challenge. Where do I, where is that balance? Or how do I stand course that God is the one who has made me and I stand in the truth of God's word for me and, and who I am? So sometimes self-esteem and self-image issues also turn out to be a challenge. Often it, it's also busyness, you know, where the challenge is that uh, I think everyone has to be doing something at all points of time. 
you know. So, so just a sense of being quiet, a time of a quiet time, or just spending some time with family. All of that again tends to become a, a, a challenge. Negative media influence. So with, with the connectivity that we have right now, it's a 24-hour connectivity. And anything that you need, you have it there. It's a disease of the now. You know, you get it and you're gratified with that. And whatever you see online begins to influence you um, with, the, with the thoughts that you have, with the mindset that you keep, the clothes that you wear, the jobs that you are in. So that again, any kind of media becomes an influence. Another challenge young people face is the struggles that they have within their families. The rates of divorce, the rates of separation, the rates of single parenthood has become, uh, has gone on the rise. And young people living at broken homes becomes very, very challenging for them. So with all of this, we, we begin to see that where do we draw a line on what is what God's word says and what is what the world, uh, world has to offer. So that's, that often becomes a struggle as well. So as young people, what are some of the things we need to be mindful of mm -hmm. so that we don't get sucked into what the world has to say and what it believes? Mm -hmm. You know, like, for example, same-sex marriage. Mm -hmm. Like, what should we do? What, is, what should our stand be? What should we think? Okay, okay, that's, uh, that's good. And I think um, you've brought about an example of same-sex marriage, but then it can be in any area, absolutely. So I'd, I'd like to address that question through certain positions that you need to uh, take care of. So the first position is knowing that the minute you isolate yourself from a believing community, you are open to influences. Like for example, you know, you keep off from, from attending either church or a life group or uh, interacting with believers together. You isolate yourself from there into a space where there is a lot more of worldly standards that are there, it puts you in a place um, of not knowing the truth. And that's where that begins. So just keeping yourself away from a structure of a believing community in itself can be a first step um, to, to, to conforming to world standards. The second thing is um, what I'd call indoctrination. So whatever we view around ourselves, we are being doctrined to. So your education, right, teaches you, your job teaches you, your media teaches you, um, culture teaches you, traditional expectations teach you. So wherever you are, you are being doctrinated. There is a new set of worldview that keeps coming in, right? So, so the more that you are exposed to something on the outside, you know, uh, your standards take a back seat. So in order to know what the counterfeit is, you need to know what the real is. Like for example, if you have two notes which are real and a counterfeit, in order to know the difference, you need to know what are the features of the real one. So similarly, unless and until you know the truth or the doctrine of God, in any situation, like you've said, same-sex marriages, we established that in our previous episode of of sexuality being ordained by God in the context of marriage between one man, one woman. So that is a doctrine. That is a truth that we establish from the word. And anything that opposes it is liable for us to fall, right? And the third is just accommodating and compromising. So the minute that we get indoctrinated through different means, we assimilate this into our mind. It just, it just gets stuck into our mind. And once it settles in our mind, we begin that journey to accommodate, to compromise. You know, it's okay, it's a, that little step forward, or this is how it is. We are in this day and culture, this is this generation now, we're in, we're in this century, so we can accommodate. And we kind of think that the doctrine of the Bible is obsolete, but that is not it. It's just that we have assimilated the standards of the world, that we are not able to delineate um, what is truth and what is false, what is real and what is counterfeit. So to be careful not to isolate ourselves from a from believing community, to, uh, to ensure that our doctrines are from the truth, that we keep time spent on the word. It's yeah. only when we read the word are we able to understand what is true, what's false. And lastly, um, 
what we accommodate to. So these are certain positions that we can take to be careful. Yeah. So what are some of the ways, uh, some practical ways that I can not get sucked into the world's way of thinking and behavior? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Joshua, what I'd like you to do is, uh, would you like to read some scripture for me? I sure. think uh, we can get our answer from yeah. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Would you, would okay. you read that for us? Yeah. All right. Romans chapter 12, 1 and 2. So here's what I want you to do. God helping you. Take your everyday, ordinary life. You're sleeping, eating, going to work and walking around life and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for Him. Don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Instead, fix your attention on God. You'll be changed from the inside out. Readily recognize what He wants from you and quickly respond to it. Unlike the culture around you, always dragging you down to its level of immaturity, God brings the best out of you, develops well-formed maturity in you. Great. So I think you took that from the message and I think we have, you, we can really take uh, some points from that. So how, your question is how do we not get sucked in? So the first thing, if you look at that scripture that it says is bring your everyday as an offering. So when we look at that, your everyday means it would be your eating, your sleeping, your working, your socializing, uh, anything that that is a part of you. So look through your day. What do you do in your day? It says, bring that everything to the throne room of God. Okay, so that is the first instruction that um, Paul gives us in, in Romans. The second thing that he says is, do not attach yourself to the values of the world. It's a very clear instruction. It says, don't go there. You know, um, world standards are like, like gravity, like magnet, it kind of pulls you because it's the most easiest thing to do. It's the narrow path. It's really easy to do. So don't attach to it. So when you do, when you are in your everyday, you begin to see that there are opposing values, opposing standards that, um, that, does, not, uh, um, that does not ring to you as the truth. It says avoid, it says stay away, it says detach. The next thing it says is to change your thinking, to change your thinking. In other versions, it talks about how you renew your mind. Now, we, we keep refocusing on this because everything starts there. It starts in our head. So let's take an example of um, maybe uh, something about gossip. Right? It's easy to gossip and that's what the whole world does, just gossip. So how do we change our thoughts? First of all is to recognize. Is what I'm doing something in line with God wants me to do? Recognize it, right? And uh, which means you need to be sure on your word, right? Yeah. So recognizing it then is to replace it. So God's word specifically says, I have to be careful. I have to treat, be kind to one another love one another. So I know that I need to replace that, that thought of gossip with love and then is to react to it, to, to go ahead and do what the word says. So changing your thinking is actually recognizing what is not of God's standards, replacing it with God's word and reacting, it, uh, reacting to it according to what God wants you to do. So that's about changing your thinking. And the last thing that it talks about here is to guard your mind. So your mind is like a gateway, right? Your, what you see, what you hear, um, what you take in, they're like gates, right? Now, if, if we're not careful about what we allow to enter, we are easily sucked in. So it is guarding your mind. So how, how does that translate? That translates on being careful about what we see, what we are influenced by, where we are, what are the kind of, maybe the company that we keep, the kind of um, rules that we have, regulations that we have, guarding our mind. So these are, as written so beautifully in Romans 12 too, is to be able to do these things so that we protect ourselves. So it is to ensure that we, we give our everyday to God, 
We ensure that we keep ourselves away from, from the standards of the world. It's to change our way of thinking by recognizing, by replacing it and reacting to what God wants us to do. And lastly, it is to be able to guard the windows and doors of our minds so that we're not sucked into different doctrines. Yeah. Uh, my next question would be, um, how do we, as young people, stand up for truth in a world that's always compromising you know, God's perfect standards. Is it even possible to live a life of just perfect standards in alignment with God? Mm -hmm. uh, to give you a short answer, I'd say through the power of the Holy Spirit it is, right? But maybe to give you a longer one. Uh, uh, first of all, I think the mantra of today's world is to live it up, right? But in contrast, you know what Solomon writes in Ecclesiastes? He says, remember your creator in the days of your youth. Okay, so that is a direct message for us, for you all as young people, right? To remember the creator in the days of your youth, which means to build, number one, to stand up for truth. First of all, you need to build a personal relationship with your creator. The second thing is to, uh, to pursue a life of holiness. Uh, in order to stand up for the truth, like we said, the, the entire world's eyes is on you and they're watching. And unless there is um, a progressive sanctification that takes place, we will not be able to stand up for what is right. So although I know that I'm the righteousness of God, I progress in that knowledge. I progress in that understanding. And I am made holy through my, my, my time with God through, through, my, through my relationship with Him. So um, cultivating personal holiness also means to be careful about what are the kind of influences that I place myself in, okay? To be able to um, uh, ensure and see that the way that I live is in tune with what God wants. Another thing that um, helps you stand up for your truth a stand up for the truth is, um, is what Paul wrote to Timothy. He said, be an example. He says, do not despise, do not feel despised because you are a youth, right? But live a life of an example, you know? So be an example in truth, be an example in your word, in your spirit, in your purity. So it's actually telling you in order to stand up for truth, you need to be an example to those uh, outside of you. The other thing is also to be prayerful, be, be, uh, take time to, to pray and ask God for guidance to help you through these, these situations. And lastly, um, is to proclaim the truth boldly. You know, Romans tells us that I'm not ashamed to speak of the work of Christ. Now, in, a time, in order to stand up for truth, we can't keep the truth inside of us and concealed and kept hidden. It has to be proclaimed out boldly to, to, to a world that sees. So in order to stand up for what is right, there are these things that you can, you can practically and actively do. And this not all on your own. This not all on your own merit or on your own ability or because you speak well or because you, you can do certain things well, but with the power of the Holy Spirit that we, we stand up and proclaim the gospel through everything that the world comes against. Well, thank you guys. That's all we have for these uh, episodes. Um, we thank you that you have tuned in as well. Oh, shall we close with prayer? Father God, we thank you for what you have helped us learn and understand today. That you want most of all from us to have a relationship with you. Lord, that you want us to stand in tune with who you are. I mean, even, even as we face a world with its different standards, Lord, you empower us by the, by the power of your Holy Spirit and by your word to stand for you. We pray that you will teach us diligence in knowing your word so that we can understand the, the real from the counterfeit. We thank you because of the truth that you have put into our hearts. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Once again, thank you for tuning into Living Strong. 
uh, till we meet, live life the Jesus way. Imagine a world without the Psalmist, a world without David. We would have lost out on so many of those experiences that these men of God had. Each of them talks about, you know, their unique life experience and their testimony, their their life struggles, their their faith and their victories and their battles. These songs are already written, but um, but now they get to be expounded in a way that it embodies each songwriter's heart and their life story. For me, what was amazing was this recurring theme of God's love that is, you know, weaved through all these songs and um, talks about God's unfailing love, His untiring love. Uh, he's an ever-present God and His love is just so much better than life itself. As I was, you know, producing these songs and working on the music, each day just sitting and listening to these life-giving words of, you know, my rock, my tower, my shelter. You know, there's no better way, I think, that I can spend my day. You're my ever-present God. There are realms of authority that is available, that exists. There have been high points in Christian history where men and women would step into these realms and demonstrate that truly as believers, we can walk and operate in those realms. These high water marks, these high points in Christian experience are not meant to be isolated events in the lives of individuals. They are really meant to be the normal Christian life. And as a body, we are trying to encourage ourselves saying, look, there is more, let's keep pushing, let's keep moving, because there are greater realms of authority that we are supposed to be walking in. That's what we are journeying into.